What's going on guys, this is Tall Rick with Urban Cow Gaming, and I'm here to give you a tutorial on the fission reactor for the mechanism mod. The fission reactor is fairly new to the mechanism mod, since the uh, wikis haven't been updated yet. And it's also a requirement for a lot of the late game tech in mechanism. So I'd figure I'd just make this tutorial to share what I've learned about the fission reactor. What you'll need is the reactor casings, the reactor port, the fuel assembly, and the control rod assembly. And then it also has the reactor logic adapter, which is for other mods. But you don't need the logic adapter. It can be pretty much any rectangular shape, as long as it follows a couple rules. In order to work, it needs these reactor ports, it needs at least one of these, and at least one of these. So I'm gonna build kind of a mid-tier fission reactor here. Uh, these do not need to be square at all. Well, they, they need to be rectangular, but they don't need to be perfectly square as I'm building in here. These fission fuel assemblies, um, they work best when they have at least a little, um, they're either touching the, the casing, air, or the control rod assembly. If they're touching each other, then it's less efficient. So, for example, if I have one right next to each other, this will still work, it'll just be less efficient. So, you're going to want to set it up kind of like this, so that it's as efficient as possible. And then these uh, control rod assemblies just go right on top of this, like that. And we'll add the ports in. You need four. You need uh, one for steam, one for water, one for waste, and one for the fuel. You need a configurator to actually make this work. Uh, this will be the steam pipe. Oh yes, so the reactor can't actually produce power by itself. It produces steam, which goes to a turbine. It doesn't have to be a mechanism turbine. This is a mechanism turbine. But it can be a different mods turbine if you prefer. But that's the only way it can produce power, is if it goes to a turbine. So, we need to change this to a s output coolant, which will send the steam out to these pressurized cables here, or pressurized um, tubes here. It's not connected yet because this isn't finished, but it will once I finish it up. Now this can stay as an input since it's going to be the water. So that's obviously a liquid, so you need the mechanical pipes for it. And then also, the reactor, if you put tubes, if you put mechanical pipes on the vents here, it will actually send the water back through these and into, into the system again. So uh, depending on the setup, you might only need one pump to actually maintain this thing. You might not even need one, but I like to have one just in case something goes wrong. All right, so this will be the fuel input and this will be the waste output. The waste is what you use to actually build things with. So that's why we're interested in the waste. So the fissile fuel has a process to get it, but that's not the uh, subject of this video. Uh, maybe I'll make a video on that later, but for now we'll just use this creative item. Alright, so we're about ready to finish up the reactor. And now we'll see that everything is connecting. Alright, so this is fully ready. So. In survival, I'd leave this pump to run for a while, so that it, as we'll see here, fills up these reservoirs. So we have the coolant tank, that's the water, the fuel tank, which is obviously the fuel, the heated coolant tank, which is going to become the steam, and the waste tank, which is obviously the nuclear waste. It's very important that this is fully filled up, or else um, uh, some bad things can happen if you try to do this without this uh, reactor being filled up totally uh, because it will immediately start boiling the water off and if this doesn't have enough time to actually fill it back up again then it'll just uh, get rid of all its water and explode which isn't good so I'm gonna let that fill up totally before I continue this okay so the reactor is fully filled with water at the moment 
Um, so here's some something important. The level of mechanical pipe is important because you don't lose any water in this system, but you can overwhelm the pipe's ability to actually move the water. So depending on how much you want to burn in this thing, you might need better water infrastructure, which isn't all that expensive. But for the time being, this is good enough. So I'm going to go ahead and activate this. Okay, so as we can see, it's producing steam. Steam's going to the turbine here, producing power at a okay rate. And then the water from the steam is turning back into water and coming down into this pipe and through here in, back into the machine and refilling it back into the into the reactor. And you can see here that it's producing nuclear waste. Now, this isn't great since it takes 1,000 of this. I'm sorry, it takes 10,000 of this to create an, a single uh, polonium pellet. And as you can see, it takes two of these, so that's 20,000 nuclear waste for this helmet. Uh, that's not too good. So what you need to do is configure the reactor. So if we go into here, we can increase the rate at which it burns fuel. Right now it's at 0.1 millibuc millibuckets per tick, which is roughly per second. Um, but we can turn that up to, say, 2, which will increase the burn rate increase the um, heating rate and as you can see here over at the turbine it increases the speed at which the turbine spins and also increases the power it produces but importantly it also increases the amount of waste it produces which is good for us and like I said earlier make sure you have enough um, water capacity in your pipes to actually continue to feed this thing because if you run out of water uh bad things yeah i'm not i'm not gonna go into polonium right now uh, or anything like that but that pretty much sums up the entirety of the reactors now they don't have to be this size they can be as small as they can be as small as this that will also function as you can see um, can only burn one per tick. Can't go higher than that though. But that's the smallest it can be. And the largest it can be is 18 by 18 by 18, which is... You probably need multiple steam outputs and multiple water inputs, even at the highest level of uh, pressurized tube and mechanical pipe. If you would like me to go over any other aspects of me mechanism, like the turbine or um, polonium processing or, or um, fissile fuel processing, that sort of thing, go ahead and lead a, leave a comment. The mod can be found on Curse, CurseForge. Uh, the creators of mechanism have their own page there. Uh, they're really dedicated to this. So, I mean, if, if you want to, uh, go ahead and maybe donate to them. They put a lot of love into this mod. It's, for what it is, it's, it's, it's extremely lightweight. Go ahead and support them if you can. I mean, they're, they're a great team. If you liked the video, go ahead and hit like. Um, if you want to see more of this, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I'm sure I will uh, create more videos on Mechanism as we go on. And I want to thank you for watching. This has been Urban Cow Gaming, and I'm Tall Rick. Uh, have a good one. Bye.